Hey there everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to diversify your traffic so that you're not caught high and dry if Facebook goes down or Instagram goes down or if you get an ad account banned. So this is going to be a really important video. If you do any kind of digital marketing or paid, ad or paid ads or social media marketing, you're going to want to watch this video because it's going to help you to give you a lot more stability in your digital marketing. Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears. I make daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your business with digital marketing, I cover everything from pay-per-click ads to SEO, to email marketing, to text message marketing. Basically, if it rela relates to digital marketing, we cover it here. So you wanna um, subscribe for sure. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button. All right, let's talk about diversification of traffic. Now this is extremely important. Today is a great example. Facebook and Instagram went down for a lot of users and specifically for their pages and for their messenger platform and, and all kinds of features are missing. So this doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Last year, uh, right before Black Friday, Facebook Ads Manager went down for almost eight hours on literally the day before Black Friday. It was awful, and if you do any kind of paid ads, you probably remember you were trying to get out as much ad budget as you could to do your promotions, but you couldn't get it out. So it was very, very frustrating. So this actually happens quite a bit, and not only that, Facebook is going through a bunch of growing pains with their ad platform. So if you're doing any kind of advertising, one of my clients who was spending over $1,500 a day on ads was um, banned from the account. And it was to no fault of theirs. It was just a glitch that happened. And it took us four days to get back on to being able to run ads again. And that was extremely terrifying, but it was a great eye-opening experience because you can't put all of your eggs in one basket. If you put all of your eggs in the Facebook basket, if Facebook goes down, if you get banned for a violation of terms of service, if they change the rules, you're in trouble. So we call this rented media. It's not stuff that you own because basically you're renting your space on there. You don't get to control when your content is distributed. You don't get to control if you have an ad account. You don't get to control if you have an account at all. So what can you do to help um, lessen this risk of putting all of your eggs in one basket and all of a sudden if something disappears, you're in trouble. If, you, if Facebook disappeared right now, what would you do for paid traffic? If Instagram disappeared right now, what would you do for traffic? Hopefully you have a few other channels to diversify, but putting all of your eggs into one basket is a, is a recipe for failure. So let's talk about a few things. Number one is you should be building an email list. If you don't have an email list, you gotta start right now. And if you're not putting as much effort into email as you should be, please start. Today is a great eye-opening experience for a lot of people who think you know Facebook's always gonna be there. Chances are it will always be there, but you can't rely on it. They always change terms of services. And I suspect that a lot of the problems that we had in the last election are going to be amplified this time. So. Um, if you're not familiar with the Cambridge Analytica scandal and all of the things that happened last time, Facebook is really, really tightening down their ad platforms. They don't want any kind of funny business going on in meddling in the elections. They have really had a bad track record with privacy and all of these other things. So they're going to be making drastic changes. And this is going to be just headaches for advertisers and business owners who are doing legitimate business. But Facebook is so cautious now that they just completely ban ad accounts for a simple violation of service. So don't get caught with your pants down. Don't get caught in a situation like this. So number one is you need to have an email list. Now the more that you can take your Facebook audience and diversify them, not only will they be able to engage with you on other platforms, which have different context and different ways that you can engage with clients, but you're also going to get a better, deeper relationship because they'll be following you over and they'll see you more. So number two tip is to have additional channels. Things like YouTube. YouTube is an amazing channel. It's interesting to see the time. I have audiences on both Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. As far as video goes, YouTube uh, watch times for video is so much longer than Facebook. So if you wanna have a more deep, um, better relationship with your clients, YouTube is a great place and you can still get organic traffic on your videos and try to rank your videos um, as well. So YouTube is a fantastic channel. Absolutely think about YouTube. Think about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is growing like crazy. Even if you're not B2B, 
the people that are your cu your customers are likely on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a higher um, net worth and typically a bit more sophisticated of a demographic. So depending on who you're targeting, LinkedIn is still great. Pinterest is still a good platform, especially if you have a more female demographic and people still use Pinterest all the time. It has great utility. And then there are pay-per-click ads, pre-roll ads for things like YouTube and just other traffic sources and other traffic networks like Taboola and other things where you can just buy basically volume of cold traffic ads for contextual placements. I say all this to say that you should be testing things out. It's very, very difficult if you have a Facebook audience and a Facebook uh, campaign that's working well. If you have that and you try to convert that into just directly into pay-per-click ads on Google, it takes time because the traffic temperatures are so different. Facebook is really unique that the targeting is amazing in their ad platform. And since that's the case, we're able to get really detailed on who should be seeing our ads, how they're going to be seeing them, the platform and the mindset that they're going to be in. When you're on YouTube or other channels, it's a lot more difficult in many cases to say, like, I'm going to be targeting this very subset of, of individuals. I'll give you an example. So I'm trying to target veterinarians, for example. Veterinarians are a very specific group of people, and it's very simple to target them on Facebook. But if I go on to YouTube, it's a lot more difficult to target them. And if I go on to Google pay-per-click ads, it's even more difficult. Now I'm competing on all kinds of keywords that are very, very expensive. So if you don't have something set up, it's time to start. Um, you want to be sure to build out retargeting audiences and try to get as many different audience sources as you can. I would say shoot for three to four different kind of mediums that you're consistently marketing on. That way, if one goes away, you're going to be in a, a situation that's not going to be ideal, but at least you'll be okay. So having email, text messaging is still a great way to do things. Um, push notifications on uh, websites are also great mediums to be communicating with your um, list with. And basically anything that you can control and own and push out is going to be very, very helpful. I would love to know what are your favorite ways and your favorite mediums. Now, I'm just talking about digital marketing. You could also get physical addresses of your clients and send them things too in the mail. So sending um, dimensional mail, which is called lumpy mail, that's still a good way to get hold of people. And if you have a customer that's going to be valuable to you, it makes sense to send out stuff to them. But I would love to know what are your thoughts what do you do to communicate with your clients? And um, are there any other ways that you like to use? Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, or need help with anything, don't hesitate to reach out. And I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.